Hi everyone! Today we are going to learn how to draw Ted Harrison inspired snow globes. Ted Harrison was an artist who created beautiful landscape paintings of the Yukon region in Canada, which is where he lived. This is a picture of Ted next to one of his huge, colorful paintings. What you're going to need today is a piece of paper and a pencil, a black marker, and something round to trace around so that you can make a perfect circular snow globe shape. I have a CD, but you could also use a bowl. I also have some markers to color with. If you don't have markers, you can use whatever coloring supplies you have. Now you can decide if you want your paper tall ways or long ways. I'm going to go with long ways today, but it's totally up to you. Next, I'm going to take my CD and I'm going to line it up in the center of my paper a little bit towards the top. This is where my snow globe will be placed. Now with my black marker, I'm going to be carefully holding my CD down and tracing around that CD so I get a, per a perfect circle shape. Now I recommend doing this with pencil first if you are not the best tracer or if you really want a perfect circle and then tracing it over with black marker after you've gotten that perfect circle. So there's my circle. I have traced it with my black marker and now I'm ready to start drawing the base of my snow globe. I'm going to draw two diagonal lines down and I'm going to use my pencil for this part just in case I make a mistake and I can erase. So here's my kind of curvy diagonal line down there and one on the other side. I'm going to make it a little more curved. And I want to make sure that my bottom line is a curved line that follows the same shape of my snow globe, that round circle that I just drew. If we draw a straight line on the bottom part of our base, our snow globe won't look like a form. It will look kind of flat, so it's important that that bottom line is curved. Now I just traced over those lines with my black marker and I erased my pencil marks. Now it's time to focus on the inner part of our snow globe. Let's take a look at some of Ted Harrison's artworks. You can see here that he really loves color. He uses lots of cool colors in this artwork with some warm colors on the houses. Some common themes in Ted Harrison's work are those colors, lots of bright colors, as well as houses, fishing boats, and other things that he saw on a daily basis in the Yukon in Canada. You'll also notice that Ted Harrison likes to section off the areas where he uses lots of color. For example, in the sky, he has different sections of different colors. So we're going to do something a little bit similar and what I'm going to do is draw a house similar to the style of Ted Harrison's houses that he draws. And I'm also going to include lots of colors in the sky. So let's get started on the inside of our snow globe. I'm first drawing sort of a, uh, an organic type of line for our horizon line. It's a little bit below the center of my circle. Next, I'm going to draw a house. To draw a house and make it look three-dimensional, I'm first going to start with two vertical lines like that and two diagonal lines just to draw the basic shape of a house. Once you're done drawing those four lines, then you can start thinking about the top of your roof and how we can make that part three-dimensional. What I'm going to do next is use a diagonal line that goes back just like that. And I'm going to draw a parallel line underneath it on the same angle. Remember, parallel lines are lines that are next to each other that never touch. I also just drew a nice curvy line to end my roof. And finally, my last line is a little vertical line down. So there's my three-dimensional house. Yours might look a little bit different and that is a-okay. Next, I'm going to add some doors and windows to my house. I'm drawing two vertical lines and a little diagonal line on the top of my door that matches that same angle as my roof. It's important that when you draw your windows and door on this side of your house, that those lines 
those horizontal lines, not the vertical ones, match the same angle as your roof. That will help to make it look more accurate and more like a form. I'm adding a little siding to my roof here, and I think I'm going to add a little door over here on this side. Now, if you want to add more windows or more doors or some different decorations to your house, maybe you have icicles on the roof or even Christmas lights, it's up to you. You can design your house how you want. This is just the basic design for my house. Next up is a chimney. I'm going to include a chimney here with two vertical lines and a little ellipse on top. This chimney is kind of important for this artwork because it allows us to create these lines to separate the different colors in our sky. So I'm just going to draw like some random curvy lines that come out of my chimney that divide my sky. Now this part is pretty free. Your lines could be straight, they could be curvy like mine, it's up to you. But just make sure that you're dividing your sky into different sections so that we can add different colors in those different sections of our sky, similar to the way Ted Harrison does things. Okay, I've got enough curved lines, I think. Now, I think I need something on my foreground of my snow globe or that bottom section. I'm going to draw a little pathway in the snow that leads to the bottom of my snow globe. So I drew a curved line and another curved line that's close to that one, but then gets wider as we get towards the bottom. So you see here it's wider and it gets skinnier and closer together. My two lines get closer together as we go towards the doorway. All right, now what I'm going to do is grab my black marker and start tracing all of my pencil lines that I just drew. This part I'm going to speed up so that you don't have to watch me trace. Okay, I've finished up with my tracing. Now I'm going to erase my pencil lines so that my artwork is ready to color. And I think I'm just going to add some wooden texture to my house. So I'm just using my black marker to draw these sort of broken lines and making sure that on this side of my house here that my lines are following that same angle as my roof lines and my window lines. We want to make sure that they're not they're not perfectly horizontal, that they're following that diagonal line. That really helps to create more of a form. It makes our house have the illusion that it's going back into space. Okay, we're all traced up. I have some texture on my house. Now it's time to color. So Ted Harrison likes to use those warm colors and cool colors. What I'm going to do is use lots of different warm colors for my sky and cool colors for my snow. But really, boys and girls, it's up to you what you want to do. You could have cool colors in your sky and warm colors for your snow, or you could have all cool colors with a pop of warm on your house. It's up to you. So I'm going to use different warm colors on each section of my sky. I'm going to start with my sky first, and you can see here that I have all of these different warm colors of marker. Again, if you don't have markers at home, if you have colored pencils or crayons, that works too. Just use what you have. I know we don't have all have the same art supplies at home, and that's okay. Ted Harrison uses different values of colors. Now you'll see here that I have two different values of orange. I have orange and tiger orange. Tiger orange is a little bit more dark, a little more earthy of an orange. So I am putting those two values next to each other because that's what Ted Harrison does in some of his artworks. 
If you don't have two different values of the same color, that's okay. No worries at all. Again, use what you have, friends. So I added a pop of cool color in here. I have some purple hanging out in this part of my sky because why not? Right, I finished up my sky and now it's time to start thinking about my house and what color I want my house to be. I think I'm going to use warm colors for my house, but remember everyone, it's up to you. You could use cool colors if you'd like. I'm going to do a red roof here, some yellow windows and doors, maybe to make it look like the lights are on. And I think I'm going to use that earthy tiger orange color for my house. Can't forget the chimney. Okay. Now I think I'm going to bring out some of my cool colors and use those for my snow. And I'm going to use different values of blue for the different areas in my snow. I'm going to use a darker blue and a lighter blue. My darker blue, I think I'm going to use on the main part of my snow and my lighter blue will be for the path. Remember, it's totally up to you what color you want to color in your snow. You could color your snow in a different cool color or even some warm colors. Up to you, friends. Be creative. All right, just finishing up my path here and Ta-da! There is my Ted Harrison inspired snow globe. Now I'm going to decorate the base of my snow globe just with some black marker. I'm going to add a few more curved lines that follow that same shape of my snow globe to help give it the illusion that it's round. And I'm also going to just add some little decorative patterns here with my black marker. You could color your base of your snow globe in if you'd like. I'm just using my black marker to add some designs so that the main focal point of my artwork is that colorful landscape in my snow globe. Okay friends, that's it. There is my Ted Harrison inspired snow globe artwork. You can see lots of bright pops of color. Um, I have lots of warm colors in my sky, cooler colors on my snow area some warm colors on my house. You can tell that this is Ted Harrison inspired because of all of those colors and all of the different sections that I've created. I hope you have fun with this project. Remember to be creative. If you wanted to add something else on your landscape, like a snowman or a dog or a person or a fishing boat, go for it. It's totally up to you. Have fun everyone. Can't wait to see your snow globes.